Happy Wednesday out there, Team 42. It's your skipper here at Darius Dell to present our Macro Minute for Wednesday, October 2nd, 2024. As always, we'll start with the executive summary from today's leadoff morning note. If you would like to review the analysis supporting these conclusions, as well as what specific changes you need to make in your portfolio to remain on the right side of market risk, you need to be a client of 42 Macro. So today's key macro questions are, how deep will the geopolitically induced bear trap be? And what is the current status of the U.S. economy? Our answers are yesterday, Iran fired uh, unsuccessfully fired 200 ballistic missiles into Israel following their failed barrage of 300 ballistic missiles in April. The April barrage came halfway into a 5% correction in the S&P 500. The latest barrage comes right after an all-time high in the SPY and amid adverse positioning cycle dynamics that risk exacerbating any correction. Yesterday, investors received a deluge of high-frequency data points that were mildly supportive of our resilient U.S. economy theme. Investors also received more good news on the inflation front that supports our call for the Fed to front load as many rate cuts as possible between now and the end of Q1. All told, we continue to see limited risk of a recession over a medium-term time horizon. While that view is the overwhelming consensus amongst the institutional investors that we speak with, it is unlikely to be the view among a large swath of retail investors that continue to be deluded by bear porn purveyors and their emotionally triggering tweets and newsletters. Slow and steady capitulation by this critical cohort of investors remains central to our core belief that risk assets will climb a wall of worry over the medium term. Transitioning to our 42 Micro dashboard, this one, uh, wrap, as always, we'll wrap up with a question from our community. Uh, this one's regarding an update on Treasury issuance. Uh, says, uh, Darius, apologies if I've missed any recent updates. We're curious if there's a general update on Treasury bond issuance, specifically in whether we should expect issuance to continue to lean toward shorter term bills versus longer term bonds and what impact that may have on the yield curve. 10-year Treasury seems to have been consistently rising since the last Fed meeting. Thanks, as always, uh, for the great work. Uh, so a few things here. So I'll start by saying, uh, for, if you're calling 42 Macro, uh, you can always find up our updated uh, analysis uh, regarding the uh, medium-term outlook for uh, net financing uh, by the U.S. Treasury and their uh, likely impact on U.S. liquidity uh, in our macro scattering reports. Sometimes it's bullish and it'll be in the right tail risk section. Sometimes it's bearish. It'll be in the left tail risk section. Uh, if it's neutral, then we'll probably have it in the modal outcome section. But thus far, over the last few years, it's either been bullish or bearish. Uh, and so in terms, of, um, in terms of the outlook, I would argue the outlook currently for Q4 is kind of mixed if you think about it. So we, uh, let's pick, unpack it piece by piece. So net financing is down. So on balance, that's positive. Uh, they're projecting to have a decline in the uh, TGA account in Q4. That is positive. Net bill financing is uh, declined significantly in Q4. Uh, that's negative. Uh, the, the net bond financing is declining meaningfully in Q4. That's positive. So you have a you know quite, kind of a quite the cocktail of, of things uh, to, 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 to sort of chew on as an investor uh, with respect to the, uh, the Treasury's net financing policy in the Q4. Uh, but the broader thing that we take away uh, is that, you know, the Treasury general account is likely to uh, decline in Q4 and, and continue declining in Q, uh, Q1 of next year as a result of the debt ceiling moratorium. So uh, if you think about it, you know, what we're most focused on are those two dynamics. Uh, but again, the uh, decline in bill financing may cause uh, backup in the RRP that will likely partially offset uh, the decline in the TGA, uh, at least in Q4, it won't be able to offset the decline in the TGA in Q1, uh, given that they will likely see about $700 billion of TGA spin down uh, as a function of the debt ceiling negotiations, which by and large is highly likely to be a lengthy debt ceiling negotiation. Um, if you think about the sort of current, uh, if you look at the polls, and again, we're not anchoring on polls as, the guys, uh, as, as, as indicative of what's going to happen, but it's the only thing we can talk about right now. If you anchor on the polls, you're talking about a, a Democratic president uh, and a Republican Senate and, a, you know, sort of a toss up in the House. You know, that configuration, really almost any reasonable probability configuration is going to likely wind up with gridlock uh, in Congress. And you're probably going to have a lengthy dead selling debate uh, as a function of that. Uh, sorry, not just with Congress, with Congress and the White House. So be aware of that. Um, and there was one more final thing I was going to say. Oh, the 10-year Treasury seems to have consistently been rising since the last debt meeting. Uh, this is exactly what we've been calling for. So we did a study in April and August that said, OK, we're getting closer and closer to Fed rate cuts. Uh, historically, when the Fed cuts rates uh, in a, a business cycle expansion, it has the, it, it has the um, effect of extending the extended duration of the business cycle. And as a function of extending duration of the business cycle, you've historically seen stocks and other risk assets 
outperform bonds, which have historically peaked, you know, shortly after the first rate cut. Uh, and that seems like to be what is happening, uh, you know, to a T, uh, you know, so, so since we made that call. And so we, we continue to anchor on uh, that uh, research as, you know, sort of um, one of our guiding lights uh, with respect to the medium term time horizon for, 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 for approaching asset markets. So we'll wrap it up there. Darius Dale presenting our macro minute for Wednesday, October 2nd, 2024. Uh, everyone have a wonderful day. Best of luck out there. Catch you back here tomorrow. Cheers.